When you think of upcoming young stars, the first few players to cross your mind are probably players like Josh Giddy, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, Cade Cunningham, and Jordan Poole, who aren't officially all-stars, but they are right on the brink. But there is one player who could potentially shock the entire NBA next season, Devin Vassell. Now, unless you're a diehard Spurs fan or a diehard NBA fan, then you probably never even heard of him, or at least you're not too familiar with his game. So let me explain it to you. Devin Vassell is a guard slash wing out of Florida State University. He averaged 12 points, five rebounds, and one assist while shooting 49% from the field and 41% from the three-point line. And yeah, I know, other than the three-point percentage, those numbers don't really scream future all-star, but on the defensive end, it's where he made up for his inability to consistently create offensively. He averaged 1.4 steals and one block per game, which is a very impressive feat. He was long, fast, and a very smart defender. Coming out of college, he was looked at as your typical 3 and D wing. And that's not a bad thing, because 3 and D wing are becoming a necessity for teams that have championship aspirations. He was drafted 11th in the first round, and as a rookie, he only averaged 5 points, 2 rebounds, and just under 1 assist per game. And to make matters worse, he shot just under 34% from 3. It is important to note, though, that he only played 17 minutes per night. But even then, those stats still aren't that impressive. In year number two, his production rose dramatically. With his minutes increased to 27, he averaged 12 points, four rebounds, and two assists while shooting 36% from the field and 83% from the line. He was now looked at as a quality two-way role player who could hit threes and defend at a solid rate. His next year, which was this season, his production once again skyrocketed as his minutes increased. He did only play 38 games due to having knee surgery, which really slowed him down, but he was having the best year of his short career so far. But even after his injury, he played well for the remainder of the season. This year, he averaged 18.5 points, 4 rebounds, and 3.6 assists, while shooting 44% from the field, 38% from 3, and 78% from the free throw line. When healthy, Devin is heavily considered as the best player on the Spurs. But now let's break down his entire game just to show why he has that star potential and could really shock the NBA this season. When it comes to his finishing ability, he really doesn't get to the rim. He did finish 61% of his shots in the paint, but it was just on two attempts. And he only really drives about eight times per game, which is third on his team. This is an area of his game that if he can improve, it'll be huge for his offense. And I'm not saying he needs to finish 100% of his drives on 15 attempts per game. But my point is, getting to the rim opens up a lot of opportunities opportunities with the main one being getting fouled and going to the free throw line. Players like SGA, Jason Tatum, Luka Doncic, and Joel Embiid are able to average 30 points mainly due to their ability to draw and convert fouls. If you took away free throws, all of them would be averaging 20 to 24 points per game, a full third less than what they normally score. So that's why it could be potentially game-changing for Vassell to get to the rim with more urgency. It looks like one of the reasons he's reluctant to drive is due to his thin frame, which typically prevents most players from trying to score amongst the trees. And that's totally normal, especially for younger players who come into the league thin or sort of weak. Jason Tatum wasn't an efficient driver, nor did he go into the paint and draw fouls in his first two years in the NBA. He just simply lacked the physical build to do so. He shot less than three free throws a game his first two years in the NBA. Now that he's matured and he's stronger, he shoots over eight per game. So next season, I would love to see Vassell attack downhill more on closeouts. But now let's talk about the best part of his offensive game, his mid-range. Although it wasn't the biggest sample size, Devin was one of the best mid-range scorers in the NBA this season. He shot 46% from the mid-range on four attempts per game, which ranked him just outside of the top 10. So he was close to elite in this category. Something that's really improved since his college days are his shot creation ability in the mid-range. There were many times where he was the ball handler in the pick and roll and was able to freeze the primary defender and take him off the dribble, as well as create space from the secondary help defender to get into the mid-range jumper. And as he adds more moves to his bag, he'll become even deadlier when it comes to shot creation. And the funny thing is, most NBA experts say the mid-range is actually a bad shot in today's NBA due to it being dominated by threes. And I just have to say, that simply isn't true. Maybe at some point it was, but over the last two or three or even more seasons, most of the best scorers in the game utilize the mid-range. Take this season, for example. Here are some of the players who were top 15 in the mid-range. Kevin Durant, DeMar DeRozan, Devin Booker, Brandon Ingram, Joel Embiid, the MVP, Kawhi Leonard, and even the king himself, LeBron James. And even if you step inside the mid-range to about the free throw line, elite players like John Morant, SGA, Luka, De'Aaron Fox, and Trey Young are all top 10. And I'm 
I'm talking about in the non-restricted area, which is still sort of the mid-range shot. So more and more players are realizing that they don't need to be pressured into shooting 10 threes a game, like Steph Curry and Damian Lillard. You can be just as effective at getting into the mid-range, which in many ways is better than taking a three. In the mid-range, you could draw fouls easier with more defenders being around you. It's easier to hit cutters coming off the baseline. Passing angles open up from everywhere on the floor as you collapse a defense. And oh yeah, a two-pointer is closer to the rim than a three, making it a more high percentage shot. So as long as Vassell picks up where he left off next season, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get in the top 10. And when it comes to playmaking, he's gotten better every year too. And he's even said himself that he's trying to get better here. Quote, I think at the end of the day, playmaking was a big goal for me. I want to be able to get everybody involved, not just me. I want to be a complete player. And like I mentioned earlier, he averaged two assists last season, and then this season, he averaged 3.6 when given more minutes. And he's not some game-changing passer, but he is highly unselfish, and that's a big part of being a good passer and facilitator. And it also helps that he plays for the San Antonio Spurs, who are notoriously known for their ball movement. In fact, despite the horrible record, the Spurs finished fifth in assists as a team. So he's in the perfect system for development. On defense, he's really good, especially as a team defender. He's got elite off-ball defensive instincts and awareness. He knows when to leave his man to help, and he never really overplays a situation or takes a big gamble. Simply a very disciplined defender. And again, he played only 38 games and dealt with a couple of injuries even before the surgery. But his on-ball defense is maybe the weaker part of his defense. And I'm not saying he's a bad one-on-one -on -one defender, but I wouldn't call him a consistent lockdown just yet. He definitely has shown flashes, though. He's got long strides and knows how to use his length whenever he's beaten off of the dribble showcasing good recovery skills, which is a quality every elite defender in the NBA has. Because I don't care how great of a defender you are, you're still guarding the best basketball players in the world. So occasionally, even the best defenders will get beat every once in a while. So being able to recover and get back into the play effectively is key. And honestly, it's hard to be an elite defender and give 100% effort on an overall bad defensive team. You're constantly overhelping due to your teammates not being able to keep their man in front of them, which could sometimes lead to open three. We've seen players like Andrew Wiggins, Jeremy Grant, and even Derek White all become better defenders after going to a better team with higher expectations. And yes, I know Derek White was a good defender in San Antonio, but he wasn't an all-NBA defender like he is now. And Andrew Wiggins has rocked back and forth between being a below average to average defender before he went to Golden State. So hopefully, as the Spurs get better defensively, perhaps drafting Victor Wimbanyama, we'll get to really see what a fully healthy and motivated Devin Vassell really brings defense. Defensively. And don't forget the fact that he's only 22 years old. He's young. And if he can polish up just a few areas like getting to the rim more, being more aggressive, and staying consistent on defense both on and off ball, he's someone who could really blossom into a star. Whether that be next season or a couple of seasons later, don't say you haven't been warned. Devin Vassell has the all-around talent to be really good. And one of the greatest coaches of all time also thinks so. Quote, Devin is just a natural basketball player, said Greg Popovich. He always seems to know what he should be doing on the court, where he should be, how he can help on defense, getting a rebound, taking a good shot, not turning it over. So yeah, if Coach Pop says something positive about you, then you're obviously doing something right. But what do you think? Can Devin Vassell be the next upcoming star? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.